shortly get his proprietary uh, system for oxy powder. This is the global leader. And, and then I'm done talking about it. He has the proprietary system. Others have tried to imitate it. They can't. Where it opens up in the intestines and then literally blows it out of there and literally interacts with the plaques. The, I guess the, the pre-diverticula, I guess you would call it, uh, that's in there to boil all this out. Uh, and it's just amazing that this system literally doesn't want people to know about this. And you were talking about talking to gastrointestinal experts, medical doctors. They're not even aware of it. Yes, that's right. I mean, as I was doing research and kept going further and further and further, I, it, it was amazing to me that medical, our medical scientists, the best in the world that supposedly know about everything in the human body, still didn't know about the appendix or what the appendix does. And when I was studying the intestinal tract and learning so much about how all this works and how the holes are getting burnt in there and why... Why people aren't, you know, cleaning their intestines on a regular basis and how all this led to disease. And then I stumbled across the appendix and I'm like, let me pull up some medical literature on the appendix. You know, it's got to be important in the body. It's right there at the juncture of the small intestine and the large intestine. And there was nothing there. And I was like, wait a second. Why is this being hidden? Why is this being They hidden? say the appendix and the gallbladder are vestigial. That's obviously not true. Oh, not at all. I mean, I had to actually dig up Russian documents and German documents and have them translated to figure out what the appendix was. And then it was just like, oh, my gosh, the appendix is the microcomputer system of your whole body. You think your brain is, but really it's the appendix. The appendix controls your neurological system, your endocrine system, all of the systems of the body. It tells the body what's coming in, what's going out. Why wouldn't your microcomputer be located in your intestines? That's the first exposure point to every single thing that comes into your body. And the appendix is what controls all that and what sends the messages, and it's about the size of your pink. By the way, just reading medical literature every day because I'm a news hound, I've seen mainline news over the years admitting that they'd, quote, found cells in the uh, intestines that communicate with the spine and the brain. It's all interconnected. That's why they say go with your gut because your brain's communicating with your stomach and it's literally like dinosaurs had multiple brains. Well, we basically did. Is that what you're saying? That's what I'm saying. The brain of the body is actually the appendix. And so what happens when the appendix becomes inflamed is that you're, you've poisoned it and it's become inflamed. And so what does modern medicine do? They take it out. And then you have all kinds of health problems after that. I mean, that's just one. Well, they say the gallbladder's not needed. Right. But from what I've read, it, they, they know it helps detox the liver. It's the, it's the liver's trash can, right? Right. When the liver is congested and the liver is toxic, the gallbladder gets congested, stones start to form in the gallbladder, and then you have a gallbladder attack. And instead of taking medicinal herbs to loosen it up, turn those stones into, into sponges so they can pass through the bile, the ducts, the, uh, so they can be pushed out of the body, we take the whole gallbladder out. And then the liver has to work and start... So basically, from what I've read medically, but I'm doing this in layman terms, the, the, the liver vomits out poison after it's processed it into the, you know, back in to the guts to be flushed out. The liver has uh, detoxification systems, and it takes the nutrients, it takes the toxins, and converts some toxins into, into usable forms, or it takes the nutrients and converts them into usable forms for the body. The problem is, it's like an oil filter in your car. If you don't, if you don't change your oil filter, and your oil filter becomes congested, and the blood can't work, pump through it, and it can't work properly, then the liver also has stones in it, which most people don't know. They think that the gallbladder just has stones. When's the last time you've seen a doctor do an ultrasound of the liver? They just don't do it. They don't want you to know. It's like another organ. The intestines and the liver are actually the two most important organs in the body that need to be cleansed on a regular basis because the liver becomes so congested it's like high blood pressure you know when someone has high blood pressure it's not that you have high blood pressure it's that your liver is so congested and full of stuff that the blood can't even pump through it anymore and the heart has to pump faster and harder to push the blood through it so it backs up and then all of a sudden i was reading about the liver it can be upwards of of half dead and grow back i mean it is just amazing Yes, and the liver regenerates itself every 90 days. That's why, you know, but in order to clean the liver, you need to have healthy intestines. That's why I always start off with intestinal cleansing 
and then move on to liver and gallbladder cleansing. And there's nothing or no symptom that can't be rectified by just cleansing your body. That's why they, people did fasting. That's why, you know, people do juicing and they get results. That's why the Bible said fast and then take herbs. They would eat the herbs at Passover and things like that. Exactly. I mean, the, the intestines is just your skin turned inside out. It's made of epithelial tissue just like your skin. And as a matter of fact, when we came out with Oxy Powder, people with all kinds of skin conditions, especially acne, all of it started going away, and I had to actually sign an agreement with one of the Oxy uh, companies that came out with a patent for uh, the little pads that you, that you use to rub on your, on your face. It, uh, the Oxy powder was working so good, and people were writing about it online, but they had the patent for Oxy and acne, so I had to actually take any claims off in referencing acne for the product. But the point I'm trying to make is, Anything that you have going on in your skin is also a direct result of what's going on in your bowel. So once you clean your bowel, everything starts to clean up. Your skin starts to clean up. The organs start to clean up. You start having regular bowel movements. You know, people think that they have bowel movement. One bowel movement a day is okay. And I talk to people all the time, and, and they say that they drink a cup of coffee in the morning, and they have a bowel movement, and they're fine. Well, what coffee does is actually cause inflammation and irritation to the bowel. That's why you have that bowel movement. You know, people need to focus on eating clean foods, avoid... Uh, you know, toxic beverages, avoid the MSG, avoid the GMO foods. You know, really what wreaks havoc on the intestinal lining is a combination of all those things, especially gluten now as well. So my recommendations are, you know, clean your intestines on a regular basis. You know, the herbal formulas out there, if you want to use them every now and then, that's fine. But the only way you're really going to truly clean the intestines is with oxygen cleansing. And once your intestines are clean... And you're getting that stuff out of your body on a regular basis, it doesn't have time to soak in. You know, just imagine if you're taking in a thousand particles of fluoride and pesticides and endocrine disrupting chemicals every day and BPAs and all this other stuff and they sit inside your intestines within three days, they have time to leak through and then go to your organs and cause disease. But if you're cleansing your bowel on a regular basis, those chemicals that cause the disease aren't able to get into your bloodstream and, and then, you know, cause you to have all the type of symptoms or develop the diseases that you might have. Well, I tell you, for the age you are, you look like you're 10 years younger than you are. Yeah, and I take oxy powder and clean my bowels all the time, and, but I eat healthy too. You know, I eat organic, and water is another big thing. You know, most people are dehydrated, and your bowels need water. You need to flush the pipe. You know, just think if you had a pipe-like trash can, and you, and you didn't have a liner in it, and you threw your food in there, you know, every time, and then you emptied the trash can out, and the next day you threw all your food particles in there and you emptied the trash can. Every day would be a small layer of food particles building up on that trash can. And after 30 years, you, the trash can that was originally this big, the hole in it might be this big. And, if, and, you know, you're not taking that trash can and hosing it down and rinsing it out every day. You know, that's the problem. Yeah, it's all really gross, so I'm not going to get into it, but it's absolutely true. Uh, and it, it is just, it, it's so incredible how they've suppressed all this information because they want to sick, because they want to treat the illnesses. They don't want to actually get rid of them. They don't want to find out why breast cancer or diabetes is exploding, even though we know why. They want to just treat it. Yeah. Uh, it, it's just incredible. Dr. Group is our guest. I'm Alex Jones. If you just joined us, we covered a lot of really hardcore police state news, you name it. Uh, Obama set to announce all these military actions uh, against who he armed, ISIS. That's coming up tonight. We've got Colonel Schaefer joining us in the next hour, and our reporters are going to be popping in as well. But while we have you here with us, I want to show for TV viewers, radio listeners, can just go to Infowars.com or PrisonPlanet.com to find this. Video model shows how Ebola will spread. It only takes one infection individually making it through an airport checkpoint. Health officials around the world are scrambling to contain the Ebola virus. And this breaks down how it could literally get to millions if just one carrier gets through. It's clearly gone somewhat airborne. That was in the medical data two years ago, mainline science. It's not super airborne, but it can in, in, in spit particles or, or mucus particles sneezed out, <coughs> transfer from apes to humans or uh, in the studies uh, from monkeys to pigs. And th th a month ago, this is already the biggest Ebola outbreak ever. Now you've got 2,000... 300 plus deaths, and half of those are in the last 21 days. It's reaching that exponential number because now it doesn't 
show up in three days if you get Ebola. It shows up in a couple weeks. They, they think it's mutating. We know it has a history uh, of uh, being genetically manipulated by different Western governments. Here's what I'm saying. We know that mass plagues have killed a third of Europe, the Black Plague. We know that this stuff can be real. We know the Spanish flu killed tens of millions uh, at the end of World War I. So I'm, I'm concerned about this. If there's a real outbreak, we're not going to be told, though. My great uncle died last November. He lived across the street from my uncle. Uh, my aunt had taken care of my great uncle. My cousin, uh, who lived nearby, uh, Peter, got a respiratory issue, was home a few days, found dead in the morning. My uncle had taken care of him. He fought it for a month, and the doctors said that, there in Tyler, that it was the most full the hospital had ever been. With people with respiratory, they said it was bacteria, it was virus, it was a whole bunch of stuff. They said it was normal strep that had mutated, and it killed him. I mean, I'm looking at this next winter coming up. My dad got it, had, hadn't been this sick in his life, took him a month and a half to kick it. I like an idiot, went to the medical doctor. They gave me antibiotics. It went away for two weeks, came right back. I'd never been this sick. I'm somebody that used to get sick like every two or three years. Then, Dr. Group, I just went ahead and drank like three bottles of colloidal silver over a week, and it went away. I mean, why didn't I do that to begin with? And I'm not saying that's a panacea. It's just that it's, it's so incredible that 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 we already know if there's a real plague they're not going to tell us what do you think about the ebola situation what are you doing for you and your family not i'm not worried about ebola getting here i mean it, it might happen but it, it's certainly ravaging africa right now it's terrible but what i mean they're talking about it ending governments ending states over there it's so bad but what about a mousepox what about a smallpox what about a mutated black plague uh, what about a mutated uh just run-of-the-mill bacteria from all the gmo all of the uh, antibiotics in the chickens. I mean, it's only a matter of time. We're already seeing the plagues in our kids from vaccines and stuff. What does your gut tell you? My gut and the research, just like you've been putting out, shows that we're going to be dealing with a lot of bio uh, bio weapons here. I mean, we're already dealing with them. So, you know, there's a couple different ways and solutions. I mean, the, the solution, really, the strongest defense against bioweapons or any type of these viruses or mycoplasms and, and pleomorphic organisms, which we're seeing now that the viruses can actually change into a bacteria and that bacteria can change into a mycoplasm, et cetera, is keeping your body clean and healthy. I mean, your immune system is the strongest defense against anything. When the attack is, it's a twofold attack. They attack your body, they attack your immune system, they lower it down, and, and the media will create fear. And fear creates extra cortisol production and stress. Well, they know when you're stressed out and you're fearful, your immune system's gonna be down by 70%. So the panic, Instead of being in charge and ready, we're supposed to just not have storable food, not have guns, wait and just panic. No, I find it more reassuring to be prepared, but you're saying being prepared and being confident is actually part of beating it. Well, yes. I mean, the thing is, not, a lot of people out there don't pay attention and they just believe what they hear on mainstream news and they, they're not going to be prepared. As a matter of fact, they're going to be in a fearful state. They're already. I talk to people every day that are scared calling my office about Ebola outbreaks. Those are the people that are actually looking for natural. A lot of people out there are waiting for the vaccine. They're sitting there praying and they're, they're calling the CDC and they're calling the... Notice we're seeing record weird respiratory illnesses in children right after the yearly vaccination. It came out last year that the whooping was caused by the vaccine all over the country. That's right. But they admitted it in California. Their medical doctors went, no, it's the vaccine. They're saying they're begging for a trial Ebola vaccine right now that hasn't even been proven. You have from Monsanto. Yes, you have like 90% of the population that would line up right now at the local drugstore and get injected <coughs> and not even know what's in that needle. Bill and Melinda Gates are involved in it. That's right. Yep. Trace back to the bioweapons, you know, facility. But the thing is, for the listeners, you know, you have the solutions in front of you. I mean, you've been talking about it. I talk about it. You know, stocking up on iodine, which there's never been any virus, bacteria, fungus, any organism that's ever shown a resistance to iodine, to my knowledge. And if anyone has it, show it to me because I've never seen it. Okay, so you have a stock of iodine. You keep your intestines clean. 
You keep your body clean. You reduce your stress levels if you possibly can. I mean, you know, with meditation, you know, that's that's a big, huge thing that contributes to, you know, living in the parasympathetic state instead of living in the sympathetic state. You keep a, a strong hand.